This style of question has been giving students problems on the step one NBME material. Obviously, I've written this fucking question, but I say similar style. So I have an obligation to at least inculcate some high yield points here. We are not going to make this a 19 minute clip. I know you don't want extended clips like that. I'm going to keep things concise. OK, we can make this a long genetics discussion. We're just going to hone in on this question, give you a bump of a point or two. OK, so we've got 15 year old boy who's had four month history worsening shortness of breath with exertion, muscle weakness, and worsening exercise tolerance. Vitals are within normal limits, bilateral ptosis, muscle strength three out of five in the extremities, and we have a pedigree here. So when we look at pedigrees, squares are males, circles are females. Darkened shapes means the patient is affected by the disease. Light or clear transparent shapes, uh, patients are not affected by the disease. When we look at the numbering system, the Roman numeral is the row down that the patient is in. So Roman numeral three, patient is going to be in the third row down on this pedigree. The number 10, the actual uh, numeral, is going to be from left to right, which order the patient is in. So Roman numeral three, number 10, this patient is third row down, 10th over. And we see that that's going to be this bottom right dark square, okay? Now, if we analyze this pedigree, we'll notice that transmission of disease only occurs through females, does not occur through males. This is consistent with mitochondrial inheritance pattern. This can initially be misconstrued for autosomal dominant inheritance patterns because in AD pedigrees, we expect to see the disease in every generation. So initially, it can appear that way that you say, well, it's in every it's in every row of the pedigree, but when we look at each nuclear family, it's not in every generation. So, and it has not the transmission has not occurred only in the males. So, this is mitochondrial inheritance pattern. Now, when we look at these answer choices, serum lactate, MaxO2 consumption, glycolytic energy production sounds very confusing at first. We have to think about what mitochondria are actually doing in the cell. They are the location of where aerobic respiration is occurring. Most O2 consumption occurs in the mitochondria. That's where we have our TCA cycle, our Krebs cycle occurring. So if our mitochondria are fucked up, it makes sense that we're simply not going to be using as much O2 overall, right? That makes sense. So we, when we look at max O2 consumption, we expect that to be a down arrow. So if we are generating less energy via the TCA cycle, where are we generating the energy then? It's simply through glycolysis, okay? So we're going to have increased glycolytic energy production. That sounds difficult. It sounds weird, but that's the point is if you have less energy utilized, or sorry, less energy produced via the TCA cycle, we are forced instead to generate energy via anaerobic glycolysis, okay? This is what organisms who uh, prokaryotes that do not have mitochondria are doing, okay? They only have anaerobic glycolysis. So pyru pyruvate is going to be generated, shunted to lactate via lactate dehydrogenase. So we're also going to have increased serum lactate. So our answer is up arrow serum lactate, down arrow max O2 consumption, up arrow glycolytic energy production, okay? Once again, less TCA cycle, therefore less oxygen utilization overall we are forced to produce more energy via anaerobic glycolysis. And by producing more pyruvate, that can't enter the TCA cycle. More of it is simply shunted to lactate. Now, if we did not give a pedigree for this question, it, ob it, it would not be obvious that this would be a mitochondrial disease. So if we're going off strict descriptors in the vignette, they like to give you three or four variables within a constellation. They might say, they might tell you in the vignette, a patient has lactic acidosis, hypotonia, eye and or ear problems, okay? That's classic, that constellation, classic for mitochondrial diseases. They can use descriptors such as ragged red fibers. There's a condition called myoclonic epilepsy with ragged red fibers, Murph syndrome. That, so that ragged red fibers descriptor is also very buzzy. And uh, yeah, so mitochondria in tissues that require high energy consumption, okay, muscles, ears, eyes, uh, we are going to uh, expect pathology. That's your concise discussion of this clip. 
we're not going to make this a 19 minute clip, as I said at the start here. So if you liked this, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.